Welcome back to the channel. As promised, this is part 2 of Las Vegas Art Findings, where on part 1 I show you some cool art to find on the Strip. Today we venture out north of the Strip to what is often called the Old Las Vegas, the OG Strip, the Historic Center of Las Vegas, DTLB. This is Downtown Las Vegas in the Art District episode. It is about 12 minute drive from the strip, about 50 minutes if you use public transportation and an hour and 30 minutes walking, but I wouldn't recommend the latter. Before I tell you about all the cool art I found, let me tell you a little bit about the background history. Las Vegas was founded as a city in 1905 when 110 acres of land adjacent to the brand new Pacific Railroad were auctioned in what would become the downtown area, or old Las Vegas as we know it today. So this is really the OG spot. The first hotel was Golden Gate Hotel and Casino built in 1906, and it wasn't really until the 1930s that things started to pick up for this new city. And this is no strike of luck. Gambling was legalized in Nevada in 1931. In the construction of the Hoover Dam begun during this time, it was completed in 1935. With all these changes, population grew, and in order to appeal to a tourist destination, there were some key developments in the 1940s. El Cortez in 1941, on Fremont and El Rancho in 1941 is strategically built along Highway 91 on what would become the Strip. With the building of more and more developments, Las Vegas grew as a getaway destination and the competition to learn tours began for downtown versus the Strip. Needless to say that by the late 1950s, it became which one won. With the rise of the Rivera, the Soons, and the Dunes Hotel casinos, the Strip became the epicenter of glamour and entertainment. Some of the regulars included Frank Sinatra, Elvis Presley, Sammy Davis Jr., among many, many others in the entertainment industry. And now flash forward to our visit. We started a Fremont Street experience, which was a major project to revitalize the downtown area and luring tourists and locals alike, as its relevance as a place to go really took a hit in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Fremont Experience opened to the public in 1995 and has had ongoing renovations and updates throughout the years. This meant more LED light bulbs, brighter and better resolution, resulting in a big attraction. Today, Fremont Experience is definitely an experience. A light show every day at every hour from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m., hosting festivals, free concerts, live music at its three different stages. We then went to Main Street Station Casino, which opened in 1978, and its interior screams old school Las Vegas, opulent Victorian era train station, but also what a fancy casino in the 1940s and 50s would have looked like here. Mahogany wood counters and tables everywhere, crystal chandeliers galore, intricate ceilings, stained glass, embellished doors. It really has the vibe of turn of the century, very fancy mansion. And it is in a way, majority of things here are from fancy mansions, opera houses, luxurious train station, and many objects from around the world. These were super cool. They're the classic original slot machine of 1930s and 40s. I'm not a gambler myself, but I can see the appeal of the cranking up of the lever, the noises, the tactile experience. It was probably exhilarating. And now, now they're very cute. But there was a main reason why we came here. On the men's restroom, there's a slap of the Berlin Wall, which is only at the men's restroom, which is very lame, who made this decision. So we really tried to get in. We had the security guard come and see if he can stop the traffic. But apparently a lot of guys had to go pee at that time. And yes, it is placed as the black splash of the urinals. So the security guard didn't let us go in. He took pictures from me, but I couldn't see it with my own eyes. So that was disappointing. And off to the streets we go. This mural is one of the several commissioned for Life is Beautiful Music and Art Festival. This is an annual three-day music art culinary festival held in downtown Las Vegas, and art is a big part of the experience. While some artwork is only for the festival and temporary, this one stayed and is done by This Is My B World in 2017. The artistic name is B. He's based in Athens and works on projects internationally as well. I really like his vibe. It's kind of like cartoonish, upbeat, playful, jam-packed assortment of symbols, in this case of Las Vegas. We decided to walk from the main station casino to the Arts District, which is about a 25 minute walk. And I thought it was a good idea since you get to see a lot of cool murals before you get to what is considered the start of the 18B Arts District which by the way is called like that because 18 square block footprint was originally designated for the arts district development. 
This vibrant area of Las Vegas is definitely one not to miss on. You start to see murals everywhere on the front walls of art galleries, quirky shops, unique bars, there's a live theater company, food, drinks, antique shops, design studios. There's definitely a lot to see and do here. The Arts District is relatively young. It started in 1998 as a non-profit initiative to promote art, business, and residential growth. One of the goals was to repurpose old warehouses and loft spaces into galleries and studios that would bring life to a cultural hub. Now, after 24 years since its inception, 18B has definitely put its mark on the map. Every first Friday of the month, the Arts and Culture Festival takes over the streets to showcase local artists, musicians, and makers of all kinds of creation. This area around West Colorado Street and South Commerce, Imperial Avenue, reminded me so much of Bushwick, Brooklyn, and New York. It is an industrial area turned street art gem, converted warehouses, and our home to artist studios, galleries, and cool retail shops. It was pretty cool to walk through the back alleys. These long blocks of what once was gray cement walls are now a colorful mesh of different styles of art, color palettes, and messages on the walls. This was my first time visiting this side of Las Vegas and I'm definitely coming back to explore more next time. Vegas is definitely more than the glitz and the glamps of the Strip. But don't get me wrong, I love the Strip, but I think there's definitely room for both equally exciting but very different experiences in the Strip and downtown Las Vegas. So this concludes this video. Thank you for watching. Comment down below for any suggestions of your favorite spots in Las Vegas. Until next time. And don't forget to like and subscribe.